isn't it? It's been a very long time. Come, I'll show you the brute way. This is where I live, my humble brute abode. Come in. First, if you want to be a brute, you have to act like a brute. No defense, but some defense when needed. For our weapons, we only play Mandible Claw. This is my 40 card Blitz deck, and I'm telling you Mandible Claws is the way to go. The amount of damage you can push out just in one turn, or even turn one with Blood Rush Bellows, is insane. Of course, the best card of the deck, Scabskin Leathers. No introductory, except that you don't roll it as much anymore, only when you absolutely have to. Not like my, my past deck profiles. Whew, sorry, Todd. You basically use it for armor these days, but you can roll when you need to. Next, we do play Skullcap. Now, Skullcap is only really in here for those very big, heavy armored decks, such as Warrior, or Guardian because it takes a lot of time to get through through their armor and once we get through their armor we basically win but we have to get through there with enough health. Skullhorn, we use this in aggressive matchups, Ira, Ninja um, and of course against Kano. The rest you don't really care about it's a 50-50 sometimes it doesn't hit so. And Gauntlets is the one to go to. You always want to wear it it's that one plus Defense, if something's swinging at you for four, you can put this over the top. Null rune for Viscera only. And then Goliath Gauntlet. The reason why Goliath Gauntlet's in here over, over Gambler's Gloves is that with Goliath Gauntlet, you can play very aggressively on like a Command and Conquer turn. You hit, like Command and Conquer for eight is basically a game in most time, like terms if they have no armor. So you can just like destroy their arsenal. Barkbone Strapping is definitely the one you should be using. Barkbone Strapping um, blocks for one and then it gives you those off turns or like if you need to use Bonehead Barrier. Null Rune Robe and then Fandle Spring Tunic. It's, tunic's basically only in here for the Viscerai matchup. But yeah, that's it for the equipment and we'll go into the deck. So Bruce Attack Action Cards and Action Cards, they're probably the harder ones to choose. Now, I've found a perfect, solid combo, or at least way to play Brute. And it's very specific. We'll start off with the basic cards that you'll see in every Brute deck profile. Or at least Rhino deck profile. 2 Alpha Rampage. You get this off turn 1, you win most of the time. 2 Massacre. Not only is it an amazing attack action, it does get that one chance to extra intimidate your opponent which sometimes can feel like a dominate but at the end of the day it's better than a dominate. Two Beast Within, a lot of the time during like tempo games you probably won't use it, you'll probably defend with it. Unless you've got a massive massive turn I wouldn't use it. The only reason why is because with this deck you only have about 14 6 attack cards, you're bound to burn through probably 6 of your health for for your health and sometimes it's just not worth it sometimes two command and conquer now command and conquer as i said very strong card the only downside is that not a lot of people are playing defense reactions right now but the thing is because we play brute we can attack with a bunch of things first and then go command and conquer or we'll start off with command and conquer they have to block with our whole hand and we can just swing them even harder two smash instinct this is the best yellow 6 attack out of the, all the common ones. Um, it just has Intimidate 
which is better than anything else, and it's pitching for yellow. Packed Hunt pitches for red. It can be good if you want to play a very budget build instead of Command and Conquer. There's a lot of good ways to use that off, like let's say Blood Rush Bella, then it's coming in for eight. But Smash Instinct is definitely the one you want to go for. Two Wrecker Romp, standard. Every I don't like playing too many Wrecker Romps. You discard way too much. Um, and it's just not my play style. I know there is other plays that will say it's kind of different. You can play as many as you want. Um, but I feel like the blues are just the best. Like, going Beast Within into a Wrecker Romp blue is just the strongest in my opinion. And then two Savage Feast blue. This is the only card that is 50-50. There's a few other cards that I was trying, like Breakneck Battery, um, the Swing Fist Think Later. But I found that Feast Within, uh, uh, Savage Feast, is probably just the best bet. The only reason why is because it will draw your card. But the reason why it's bad is because you really want to roll Scab Skin Leathers the turn you want to do this, because then you can swing weapon and like swing this and then swing weapon and swing weapon again. So it is really bringing it down to chance without Goliath, uh, not Goliath, Gambler's Gloves. Um, so there will be some games where you just have to defend a lot, but yeah. And that's it for the attack actions. Now, Brute can either play very aggressive or very defensive. It's good in both parts, but I definitely think playing very aggressive is the way to go. Every one of your cards does something big, except for your attacks. They're the only cards that don't really have an effect. So, there's a few cards in my deck that I'll show you at the end that I feel like is kind of necessary when you play Brute. <laughs> Barraging Deep Down. I don't think I need to tell you that Barraging Deep Down is the best card in the game because it is. It's good on your off turns, you can swing weapon, even just with Claw, that's strong enough on its own. Um, and of course, you can set up three and intimidate your opponent's entire hand. It's amazing. The next card, Primeval Bellow. Um, this was uh, Arg Smash. But for the longest time, like Arg Smash was mainly for the Arg Smash was mainly only for like the Bravo matchup or the Warrior matchup. Though I've found different ways to deal with them. And of course, Mechanologist on the side too, don't dismantle shotgun mech yet. That that deck is very good. And being able to like hit all their equipment is very like good at the start. But Primeval Bellow, it turns on your claws. That's all you really care about. And like this, if you're if versing someone that has Enchanting Melody on the field, if you go this, and then you swing with weapon, that's good enough on its own. It's coming in for seven. If you get the Intimidate off, doesn't matter. And then the second best deck card of the deck, Blood Rush Bellow. This card's so good, I'm technically playing four copies of it in my deck. Um, you see this, you want to rush to this. Most of my deck is draw out your entire deck so you can get to this card. As soon as you hit this card, you take a bunch of damage and then you hit him back even harder. And the last action, one sand sketch plan. It's the correct number because you never really want to use the effect. Only in certain circumstances, like you got a beast within in your hand and you got this. You definitely search out the other beast within. Um, yeah, those are the action cards. Um, as I said, it's it's very tempo very aggressive and also very combo it really just depends on what matchup you want to go up against brute is very vast on the way you can play it um but aggressive is definitely the way let's get going yeah. <sighs> now you want to play aggressive but with aggression does come with some downsides. Sometimes you draw into cards that can end your entire turn. Or sometimes you draw into cards that 
you want to defend with that turn, but you just can't. Whew. Another jump. <laughs> oh, that one hurt. Wasn't too far, but it did hurt. <laughs> Out of war, it's an attack reaction. You can put it over the top of one of your attacks, but you mainly want to use it for the. You mainly want to use it for the. Draw two, go again, and that's it. You can use it to defend with, but it's very horrible. Um, like your warrior matchups are horrible with it, but it can be good with you, against your Bravo matchups because with Bravo, at least you can like buff it up, like buff up your attack actions. Um, and against Ninja, the, you'd rather just keep it in hand, just take the damage that turn. Um, then the one pummel. Um, this was cut for a very long time. I didn't agree with it, but now because I realized the value you can get off bark and strapping like especially with this as well Like you can just swing with weapon have one card in hand or one card in arsenal nothing remaining You can just go roll bark bone strapping and if you hit you hit and then you can just hit him with a pummel Amazing value and of course don't get me started with CNC they block with six or they have to block with eight and then if you're playing the Goliath Gauntlet, they're basically already dead. Bonehead Barrier, technically a defense reaction, two of them. Um, now, this is only mainly for the Ira matchup. This is your anti-hate Ira card, because you go play this on their first Kadachi, or you play it on their second Kadachi, and that might just end their turn. They can't get as much value out of their Kadachis as they usually could against anyone else, except we've got Bonehead Barrier and we've got equipment to block with. And, okay, there's no sigil in this deck. This is your sigil. If you don't agree with it, just play sigil. Um, I don't agree with the sigil. I feel like it's very non-brute-esque. But there is turns where you can, like, draw into a sigil and just play it instead of having Bonehead Barrier stuck in your hand. Um, yeah, and sometimes it can just get stuck in your arsenal where you don't really want to. And then two Reckless Swings. That's it for our defense. You want to play two because late game, like super late game, if you're versing a very, very defensive deck that plays like eight defense reactions, you can just have two of these in hand, well, one in Arsenal, one in hand, and then draw into the two six attacks. Play this from uh, play this from hand, and then discard the six attack, and then play the other. It's deal six, deal four damage. If they have this usual, then fucking you lose it anyways. All right, onto the spice. So. As I was saying earlier, Brute's missing, it feels like it's missing certain value cards. There's no Brute card that says on hit it does something. It's missing some extra attack value, which other, all other decks have. Like Bravo has it, Mechanol just technically has it, Warrior definitely has it. And it's just Brute is the one that's missing the extra value. Of course they have in, like Intimidate, which is basically better than anything else. But Bravo has Dominate, and they have attack like on hit hits. Now another thing about this deck is you can feel stuck on a lot of turns, and I found a lot of ways to kind of get through those like really slow turns. Like if you have to defend with your entire hand, you can come in with this instead. <sighs> Been in my cave for too long. <sighs> Coax of commotion. Swing for four. If they take the entire four, just create a quicken token. That's it. But if they defend with one card, then you create a quicken token and draw a card. This is great with scab skin leathers because you can draw a card and you can just like swing with weapon or something else. Um, and you never really want to use the health gain because it is giving your opponent health. But there have been times where it's like you're really low health and you really want to hit a beast within in hand. This is this can save your life. Promise of Plenty. I feel like this card was deeply over, like, underrated. If it's played from the Arsenal has go again, your opponent has to block with their equipment. And because we play Brute, your opponent is already blocking with their equipment. So you're already chipping that extra value down off their equipment. Has go again. If it hits, you put it in the Arsenal. Um, and because we play Brute on top of this, if you hits, if, if they have nothing in Arsenal, you can just give them a free card. Just give it to them. 
because you can intimidate their entire, entire hand and they might get like an attack action or an action in their arsenal and who really cares all you want is just to draw into your blood rush bellows and then swing them even harder and the last card of my deck cadaverous contraband the cc and the c and c now i definitely thought this card was shit when it first came out i definitely thought this was shit when it first came out but cadaverous contraband it feels like a CNC for your opponent because if you have like let's say a blood rush bellow in your arsenal, they have to block it. If they if you have like a, a even just like a barraging beatdown, they have to block it because it will put on back on top of your deck. Um I don't think I'd cut this ever. And playing two as well. It was drain of brutality for the longest time, but I just realized I should just kill my opponent. I should just let my opponent like have to defend my attacks. And this is a definitely card that your opponent has to defend. If not, then on your off turns, you're hidden for six. And then, well, you're hidden for six with this. They have to defend it. If not, then Blood Rush Bellow. Discard, and then kill them. But yes, that is my entire Brute Reinar deck profile. All for Blitz. Um, that has been a very long time. I will be back with videos. Yeah. That's it for the video. I'll see you around.